Okay, I uh, had a commenter the other day on the track pin press. Had a question about how I built it. This is something I built a while back, and what I did is I used some, uh, I think this is three by two angle iron and a uh, quarter inch thick. This could be thicker. But what I did is I just kind of welded, I don't know if you can see that very well there, but I just kind of welded two pieces together to make a box or a rectangle box. You could use a heavy wall square tubing, would probably be easier. I didn't have anything that was suitable, so that's what I used. Um, this is coil thread rod. You can buy this at a, a Maxwell Supply in Oklahoma City carries it. They're a concrete supply company. They use this for braces and that kind of stuff. Um, but basically I just used coil thread rod, um, I drilled a hole or burned a hole through there. This is where the pin can actually press through. <laughs> Uh, the problem I have is this is real close. Roxy's about to hack up a lung over there. Um, this is close to the pin size here, so if I had it to do over again, I'd probably go a little wider here. I'd probably put the angle beside the, the other angle and I'd make that wider. Another thing I would do is I would make this wider this way because the jack barely fits in here. Now... The good thing about coil thread rod is it's not super expensive. Um, I can't remember the prices on it. I'll see if I can look it up, what I paid for it, but it, it's not that bad. You can buy this by a 10 foot stick. The nuts are maybe two bucks a piece. Um, and hydraulic jack, this is just a 20 ton Arbor Freight shorty. Um, if I had this to do over again, uh, I would do a lot of things different. Like I say, I would make this wider I would be sure I had plenty of room to be able to set the jack in there with the pump to the side instead of having to set it in like I got it. Um, now that might mean I need a heavier angle here. I don't know. This What I've got works pretty well. And then what I've got here is just a... This is loose. The cylinder is able to slide up through the middle here. Now that keeps the... I can tighten these nuts down and hold the jack down against the bottom plate of the press and that makes it more stable uh, what i'm missing right now i need another nut on this side here and well that would probably do it um, that would keep everything straight but this is a pretty handy tool i mean this is a press you could actually put in a vise i mean you could clamp this in a vise you could actually use it to be upside down but if you don't have a press or you're out in the field and you need a press uh, this is a pretty compact 20 ton press. You could press U joints, um, just about anything. Um, and you could make the top plate, you can flip this over. Actually, at one point, I had this to where it locked into the top of this, um, and I was using the bottom of the jack to actually pull. If that makes any sense, I had another set of rods that would actually pull. So, it's just something that, you know, fairly cheap, uh, takes a little time. If you got a one inch drill bit, it makes this easier. You could build this with three quarter inch rod. I can't remember on the, I'll have to look up the strength on this. One inch would probably be the smallest I'd go if I went with a 20 ton jack, but if you went with a 10 ton and you could use it, uh, you could easily adapt this to a port of power. Like I say, you can make this as long as you need to. These rods can be um, cut whatever length you need to with a uh oh i just use a chop saw and uh so it's a it's a pretty simple little build uh, nothing complicated about it but it was able to press the pin out of my td8 uh, tracks and uh, it wouldn't probably press the pin out of a bigger dozer because the pin size is not going to fit in here and you might need you know <laughs> You, you might need a bigger jack for that. I don't know. But anyway, I just kind of wanted to show you that. It's a pretty simple deal. I mean, if I was to do it over, like I say, I would make this wider. I'd make sure my jack fit in there. I don't know why I didn't do that before. I think I built this before I bought the jack. 
kind of backwards. Get your jack first, see what you got. But uh, I am going to adapt this. I have a 10 ton port of power cylinder and that would give me a longer stroke so that I could actually push all the way through the track. Now, 10 ton might not do it, but I think it would if you added some heat and uh, it would probably work just fine. Another thing I did, um, I actually made some, or drilled and tapped these and put some set screws in these nuts. I didn't do all of them, but a couple of them I did. And I kind of found that's helpful because it, these things tend to loosen up when you're pressing and straining on stuff. And uh, uh, you could use Loctite or something like that though. It'd be probably just as easy, maybe a lot easier. But if you're gonna be changing anything, it's gonna be up here at the top and you wouldn't wanna probably lock the top nuts because you're gonna wanna be able to move those up and down. But anyway, it's just a simple um, hydraulic portable press and works for a lot of things. Like I say, you can, you can put this over a track rail. You can have the track rail in here. You actually have to take the top off and slide it over the rail, but then you can, uh, it doesn't work like the old C-clamp style track presses, but it, it's pretty effective, I think. And uh, anyway, I just wanted to show you that. Um, I didn't do a real fancy job on any of it. Kind of threw it together quick, but that's the, that's the story on the little track press. Or I, I just call it a hydraulic press or portable hydraulic press, basically what it is. Um, that's, you know. Anyway, there you go. Thanks for watching.